108 new artifacts are making their debut at the exhibit. The essential thing about the artifacts is not what we see, but what we know about them, the stories they have. You won't believe your eyes when you see these 15 terrifying artifacts recovered from the Titanic. Looking at them will send a chill down your spine and make you rethink going on that cruise you're planning on taking. Join us as we uncover one of the greatest tragedies of all time, piece by piece. Number 15. A Love Letter. Apart from being one of the most famous tragedies known to man, Titanic has one of the greatest love stories associated with it, all thanks to the movie. Even though there's no concrete evidence regarding Jack's existence as he won the ticket as a prize, so there were no records of him boarding the ship, and his and Rose's love story remains ever so tragic. While we can't revel in the reality of this story, you might be interested to know that love was on board the Titanic. A love letter was found among the ancient artifacts that were recovered almost 70 years after the accident. A Titanic cabin attendant named Richard Geddes penned the letter to his wife. The letter was written on the original Titanic stationery, and it even had its original Starline envelope when it was found. In addition to the declarations of love, the letter also contained information that only the passengers on the ship would know. In the letter, Richard recounted to his wife a near collision that the Titanic had with the SS City of New York on April 10, just a few days before its collision with the iceberg. A luxury liner almost escaped death and destruction by a hair's breadth due to the pull of the ship's propellers tearing apart the ropes of the iron liner, which would have brought the boat extremely close to crashing. The collision was averted by the intervention of Captain Smith, who used a tugboat to pull his boat away. Concluding the letter, Richard mentions to his wife how people on board saw this near miss as a bad omen. Number 14. A pocket watch. An antique, rusty pocket watch was recovered from a passenger who had died on the Titanic. The watch belonged to Sinai Kantor, a Russian Jewish immigrant who was aboard the Titanic on that fateful day. The artifact was initially recovered from his body after he was pulled from the icy waters by a recovery operation following the ship's sinking on April 15. The watch does have a backstory that's worthy of Jack and Rose. Sinai, who was then 34, was traveling on the Titanic with his wife, Miriam. The pair were from Russia and boarded the ship with second-class passenger tickets. They had hoped to begin a new life together in America aiming to study medicine and dentistry once they had settled down in New York City. Sinai was a furrier and planned to sell trunks of furs to fund their dreams of a larger-than-life American way. Unfortunately, fate had other plans for them. The married couple would never get a chance to begin their new life together. As part of the Women and Children's First Protocol, Miriam made it safely onto a lifeboat but Sinai refused to access the boat and, along with thousands of others, was forced into the frigid waters. Once the ship had sunk, his body would later be recovered from the icy water, and this is one of the many stories from the boat that reminds us of the lives involved and the loss in the tragedy after several days in the cold seawater. The Swiss-made watch is not in perfect shape. The hands have entirely worn away, the dial is stained, the movement is rusted, and the silver coating is almost wholly eroded. Despite being in this condition, the watch sold for $57,500 at auction, as it helped to keep the story of the Titanic captivating for more than a century. Number 13. The Violin. If you've watched James Cameron's Titanic, you'll surely remember the band playing as the ship went down. But did you know that it actually happened? Yes, it's a real story, and one of the many things that were recovered from the sunken ship was the violin that had played while it was sinking. After the boat hit the iceberg, an eight-piece band was commissioned to play music to load the lifeboats and calm the frigid and frightened passengers. Many eyewitnesses later reported that the musicians continued to play until their last breaths, and none of them made it out of the tragedy alive. The most heartbreaking part of the story, perhaps, is that the band leader, Wallace, had his body partly pulled from the water just a few days after the Titanic sank. His violin case was still attached to his back, and one of the rescuers took it as a souvenir. His body would be brought to England and buried following a funeral procession that brought tens of thousands of people out of their homes to pay their last respects. The bag that contained the violin was found several years after the sinking. Upon investigation, it was found that the violin belonged to Wallace Hartley. The band members were not part of the ship's crew and had every right to leave and save their own lives, so why didn't they? Well, 
These musicians had dedicated their final hours to calming the minds and hearts of thousands of passengers destined to die on the ship. The ship's chaos was sadly tragic, with the band playing the song, Nearer, My God, To Thee, as the ship sank to the ocean's depths. Wallace's violin would be recovered and returned to his former fiance, Maria. The violin went on to be purchased by a British collector for an astonishing £1.7 million and, to this day, remains one of the most expensive pieces of titanic memorabilia ever to be sold. The emotions she must have gone through after hearing the story should be overwhelming. Even to imagine the bravery and resilience of Wallace and his band will forever be entrenched in the hearts of the survivors and the rest of the world. Number 12. The Big Piece. Nicknamed, The Big Piece, a large section of the Titanic's hull was rescued from the ocean's depths, but why is a massive chunk of a sunken ship such a big deal? The big piece weighs a whopping 15 tons and is a 13 by 30 foot section of the hull. It was first spotted in 1994, and after a 1996 salvage operation failed when a cable holding the piece had snapped, it was successfully recovered in 1998. This piece of the hull is the most significant Titanic artifact ever recovered. Upon closer inspection, it was found that the work came from the ship's starboard side, which only proved that the steamer ultimately fell victim to the sheer elemental forces of nature. The portholes still contain their glass, and the big piece remains on display. Standing next to it feels like you're standing next to the Titanic. People who visited the exhibitions were in awe of its presence. Many people were moved to tears, and some even claimed that they experienced a tingling sensation when they touched it. Many people feel a greater connection to the Titanic when they look at this enormous piece of the hull. By doing so, the tale becomes more than just a myth. One may observe its impact on many exhibition visitors sitting in the observation rooms. Number 11. The Bell. On April 14, 1912, around 11.40 p.m., the Titanic was riding the waves just as majestically as ever. The ship's lookout spotted a giant shimmering structure and the man in the crow's nest discovered a massive fleet of icebergs and rang the alarm bell three times to alert the staff and passengers of their impending doom. Then, many decades later, in 1987, the iconic bell was recovered and now resides in the Titanic Museum. Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee, the ship's lookouts, thankfully survived the tragedy and went on to tell their perspective of how things went down. What's shocking is that they revealed they could have spotted the iceberg sooner had they been given a pair of binoculars to assist with their jobs. When asked how much sooner, Frederick replied, enough to get out of the way. After the disaster, Frederick's wife had him take his own life on January 10, 1965. It can be hard to understand how much the incident affected the lives of everyone on board. Just thinking about how everyone on the boat felt after the bell was rung three times is impossible to comprehend. Number 10. Vials of Perfume. During a salvage mission in the year 2000, a leather pouch was recovered. Salvage expert Dick Barton told ABC News that they couldn't figure out what they were looking at until they had hit the surface. When they opened up the pouch, something exciting happened. Opening up the bag filled the lab with Edwardian perfume. So, apparently, the purse had contained 62 tiny vials of perfume samples that belonged to a 47-year-old perfume maker known as Adolfa Field. A first-class passenger from Manchester Sheffield fled the ship but left his leather pouch behind to be discovered years later. Several other pouches would be recovered that all had his name on them, and guess what they contained? Well, all the bags included samples of perfume. After retrieving the ship's damages, a field sense were given a second life. The aroma would be broken down into component chemicals to recreate the smell, leading to a perfume now called Legacy 1912. If you're wondering what it smells like, they say it smells like delicate lemon, neutral blushing rose, and warm sheer amber. The packaging design would be inspired by a door brought up from the wreck. Number 9. An Alligator Purse. One of the luxuries of the Titanic was an alligator pocketbook that belonged to a British hatmaker by the name of Marion. She was relocating to the United States to live with her daughter and grandchildren and was not planning to board the Titanic. Nevertheless, the other ship she was scheduled to board was out of service, so she bought a third-class ticket. Among her bag would be her marriage certificate, a canary receipt proving a shipment to a retired relative, and a letter from a previous landlord attesting to her paying payments. The fact that the papers were in her pocketbook protected the contents from the sea and allowed them to survive. 
According to conservators, the thickness and quality of the alligator skin are incomparable to anything you would find today. Making long-lasting items that would withstand the test of time was the general mindset in those days, but sadly, Marion perished with the Titanic. One has to wonder what her life would have been like had she been able to board her original ship and make it to America. Number 8. A menu of the ship's last meal. Have you ever wondered what was on the menu of the most prominent luxury ship in the world? Well, you're about to find out. People worldwide are still fascinated by the Titanic, 104 years after it sank. Not only because of the giant scale of the tragedy, but because the Titanic's tale is one of old world valor. Nobility still considered it a story of old world class differences, considering the first, second, and third class passengers' menus. The comprehensive list of options included several courses described in a menu. In the Titanic's wreck, first class passengers had access to a whole host of different kinds of delicacies. Even though the second class menus were slightly less fancy, they still had delicious dishes, roasted turkey with cranberry sauce, spring lamb with mint sauce, and baked haddock in a sharp sauce. There was also plum pudding and wine jelly on the other side. However, the third class menu seemed like slop for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Is anyone up for some cooked potatoes and rice soup? The vital thing to remember is that the Titanic was thought to have the best restaurant on board, and this example does support that claim. For one lunch, over 40 different options for meals were available, and that's just in one meal of the day, just for the first class. It sounds crazy to think about. Number 7. Bronze Cherub A bronze cherub was part of the Titanic. The artifact exhibition was formally shown at the Luxor Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. The cherub is a component of a lamp left by the staircase that connected the sea deck to the promenade deck. Although cherub statues could be seen throughout the Titanic, they were most adorned along the five-level grand staircase. Which specific one this cherub came from is up for question, according to CNN. One opinion is that it originated from the higher level of the grand staircase in first class because it's smaller than the cherubs on the main staircase. It landed the statue's torch in left foot, which may have been lost when it was yanked from its place. With the release of James Cameron's record-breaking box office hit Titanic, this cherub gained notoriety because it was the perfect romantic background character as Jack courted Rose on the grand staircase. This big cherub is for a smaller one recovered from the ocean floor. What's terrifying about this religious iconography is that it is being used as a literal center of such enormous tragedy. Cherubs are usually known as bearers of the throne or creatures who attend to God. Some people take this religious figure to have a deeper meaning. Before the Titanic had set sail, it was often claimed that not even God was capable of sinking the boat. However, some religious people saw grave blasphemy in these claims and believed that God would not let this go unpunished. Many people were even convinced that it was human pride that caused the sinking of the Titanic, as it was God's divine wrath. Was the cherub surviving all these years in the wreckage and eventually being found a religious message? Nobody can say for sure. Number 6. Titanic Radio Before you say anything, let me be clear, the radio is a piece of the ship that has not yet been recovered. However, it still deserves an honorable mention on this list owing to its contents and importance along with implications of whether or not to retrieve it. The radio has been the focus of a long ongoing debate known in 1912 as the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Machine. This radio aboard the ship sent distressed calls to nearby vessels when disaster was spotted. This would save the lives of around 700 people who could get on the lifeboats and be rescued. Supporters of the excavation would argue that it's essential to salvage it before it's lost forever. Underwater footage shows that the machine is covered in rust and may soon become undiscoverable if action is not taken. However, the bodies of many of the people who perished on the ship have never been recovered, and the debate is whether there might still be remains of the victims down there. Lawyers have been arguing against the retrieval of the radio as the dive plan did not include the prospect of there being human remains. To retrieve the radio, they would need to cut into the ship's radio compartment, and that's something that preservation advocates vehemently oppose. It's uncertain whether the radio will ever be recovered and brought to the surface shortly, but one thing is for sure, it will be very chilling to hear the voices of the now perished and take a peek into what went down on that fateful day. Number 5. A Shoe 
A man's shoe is one of the rarest items to be shown from the items recovered from the Titanic because of its deplorable condition at first glance. It may seem like a torn and worn out shoe, but if you look more closely, you'll uncover a lot more about it. This poorly preserved men's leather shoe only consists of the welt top cap and partial quarter with the insole. Looking at the man's shoe reminds you of the genuine people involved in such a colossal disaster. It's easy to overlook the impact the event has had on each person aboard the giant steamer, and to get lost in numbers and statistics, and just the magnitude of it all. Still, it's equally terrifying to think about how the thousands of people felt in those long and painful moments leading up to their death and the destruction of one of the world's most significant structures. It reminds us of the countless people who had hoped to begin a new life in America but never made it to the shores of the free world to start their unique way. The fragile condition of the ship adds to the feeling of the unrelenting nature of the ocean and the gigantic waves that the giant boat fell victim to. Number 4. Sheet Music Played by the Band The band's sheet music was miraculously retrieved from the North Atlantic. Two pieces of music, On Mobile Bay, from circa 1910 and Put Your Arms Around Me, Honey, from the Broadway show, Madame Cherie, have been found amongst the wreckage. The second item belongs to Howard Irwin, who was on a friend around the world trip, and the Titanic's inaugural voyage was to be the last leg of their journey. Irwin, on the other hand, did not make it on board. He may have been robbed just before the Titanic had sailed, but both his buddy and his goods made it on the ship. Henry Sudahall Jr., Irwin's companion, tragically perished in the shipwreck. Knowing the kind of music being played on the boat takes us one step closer to imagining what it must have been like aboard the Titanic. Even though the luxurious descriptions sound impressive, what follows is one of the biggest tragedies that the world has seen to date. Finding out more and more details about the journey makes the tragedy seem so much more accurate and significant than one could have ever imagined. Number 3. The Telegraph. Unlike the radio machine that has not yet been recovered, the engine telegraph was among the ship's machinery that made it back to land. This artifact was found in 1987 and was used to relay commands to the engine room, communicating with all the crew on board and connecting them to the engine room. This telegraph was likely the device used to communicate between members of the team when the iceberg was spotted and the chaos began. It's believed to have played a central role in the collision with the iceberg. At the same time, it still needs to be determined what exact orders were being given from the bridge to the engine room and vice versa. One thing that has been agreed upon is that the Titanic slowed down after the collision, which means that whatever orders were being relayed took too long to be received. The ship struck the iceberg 37 seconds after it had been spotted, and we all know what happened next. Number 2. The Hat. Another collection of personal belongings retrieved from the wreck is a bowler hat. This bowler hat was recovered in 1993 and is still in surprisingly good shape, given that it was discovered surrounded by wreckage on the ocean floor. Little is known about the hat's owner, but as hats were a fairly popular male adornment of the time, any of the hundreds of men on board could have worn it. It's unclear who the hat belonged to, but the tragedy of all the people on the ship that night still remains the same. Number 1. Keys. Numerous lives would have been saved thanks to this unique set of keys. Samuel Hemming, a crew member, used them to retrieve the lifeboat lanterns that had been used to help individuals leave the ship with illumination. The lanterns were kept in a room below deck, so Hemming had to take a life-threatening risk into his own hands to get them. Hemming was saved from the sinking ship and lived the rest of his life with the three keys in his possession before they were purchased by a private collector. They were passed down through the generations, and it's not just these keys that were put up for auction in 2016. A Titanic locker key sold at auction for $100,000. It's fantastic to see parts of the stories we've been hearing all our lives and have watched in movies, but it all begins to feel too real and too close to home. Real people, more than 1,500 lives, were lost in one night. Unsuspecting visitors out at sea caught the cruel wrath of nature. That's it for today, my friends. Please share it with your friends and subscribe for future videos like this one.